you make me really happy, I must say. You make my day with this story. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. Magnus, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Uh, I've been following your career for a long time and I look forward to this conversation. Before we get lost in everything that we can talk about, um, you have a a, a special birthday coming up this year. Um, are you somebody that looks to these moments as milestones and, and times to reflect or don't you really care about birthdays at all? Um, it's a little bit hard to, uh, to say, but uh, in one way, I am fantastic happy that I got 60 years on this earth. Yeah, uh, I'm strong and uh, healthy that makes me happy and um, it's hard to um, see myself like 60 years old because I still am um, a rock guy inside myself right. if you know what I mean yeah, so, yeah. so it, I, I've hard to get it in my head that I will turn 60 years yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be a big celebration, uh, but and maybe no better way to celebrate this milestone for you than your, um, let's call it solo album. Uh, there's a lot to unpack, obviously. Um, it is time to rock the world again, as the album is titled. Um, you've played with so many bands and you've been a guest for a lot of projects and so on. Now you're releasing an album under your own name. There's other people, obviously, that are that are around you, that are helping you. But um, out of all the releases that you've been a part of, releasing something under your own name, is that is that the most stressful? Maybe also most exciting, but it is really under your name. There's nowhere to run. <clears throat> run to the hills. <laughs> no, I, I joking. I, I, I joking. Uh, uh, first of all, I will say this is my solo album number ten. No, it's not my solo album, but I did ten solo albums before with other kind of music. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, but in uh, in my on my platform for all my life, it just been the rock music, and then I did an adventure here and there to learn. Yeah other styles and that but um, uh, this time it's magnus rose and band and it's uh, five members yeah and <clears throat> my wish and my id is to tour with this band and record more albums okay i got i got luck to get the uh, two fantastic musicians from brazil uh, that I play with in Shadowside, Fabio Lutvidas and uh, Rafael Matos. Mm -hmm. I also have um, with myself three Swedish guys. So, so you can say it's an it, international band, you can say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the singer is Senny Gram and the keyboard player and singer is uh, Mikael Erlansson. And uh, we five persons are Magnus Rosen band, like it yeah. is. And it feels fantastic fantastic and it's the first album that i make rock music with my name exactly. and that is my roots and my past so this feels very very special uh, there is a lot going on on this album there's a lot of people involved i want to get to that First, I want to share with you um, my personal story, why I've always been uh, so, you know, a, a fan of yours. And, you know, I discovered you through Hammerfall when I was a teenager uh, in the 90s. I think if the uh, my first Hammerfall record was Renegade, um, and, and that's how I discovered you. Um, so I know that you don't know this, but... Um, uh, at a show in the Netherlands, I believe it was the the zero thirteen in Tilburg. Um, you know, was lucky to, to 
to catch your your guitar pick, uh, put it in the wallet. Wallet got stolen. Uh, guitar pick was gone. I reached out to your webmaster of your solo website back in the day. Um, it's like, hey, this happened. And then a few weeks later, I got um, two signed photos from you, two guitar picks, and a and a note that you had written clearly because I could see the imprint of a piece of paper that you had designed a stage outfit on uh, uh, that uh, uh, you you used to write me a message. It was around Christmas time. Uh, so um, just so you know, uh, I don't live at home anymore. Uh, I live in Canada right now. I'm calling you from Toronto. But back home in Belgium in my teenage room, which my parents still kept the exact same, there is a frame with those photos, those those guitar picks, and that uh, letter that I got from you in 2000, I guess, or something like that. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, so for me, it was really, uh, really special that I finally got a chance uh, after all these years to uh, to interview you and say thank you for, for sending that letter and those signed photos. I very much appreciate it as a teenager, and I still do as a slightly older person. <laughs> thank you. You make me really happy, I must say. You make my day with this story. So let's go into this record. And the first thing that stands out when we listen, well, there's a lot of things that stand out. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of different styles of music. There are different guests also involved, different singers. Um, but often when a established musician makes their own band or, or, or solo record, it tends to be very, very focused on that one musician. And it, it's all about you know, famous guitar players that do their solo album. It's all crazy shredding guitar solos. With you, there are definitely songs and the Terminator song, for example, where you kind of show uh, all your skills on the bass. But it's really interesting to see that there's a lot of virtuoso on this album, but it's also the others. Um, there's a lot of the guitars, the drums, the keyboards, they all get their time in the spotlight. Um, you. That was really important for you that you wanted to let the other people shine, even though it's the Magnus Rosen band, but it's not yes. just Magnus Rosen. Magnus Rosen. Yes, that was very important for me because it's like who I am. I am. Um, I believe uh, all people in a band bring something mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully they bring a feeling to the music and um, so, so I'm not scared to let other people shine. If if the singer or the drummer or the guitar player, it doesn't matter. If they can shine, um, I w wish they should shine most as possible. Yeah. Um, uh, all bands is maybe not like this, but I think that's important. Uh, it's make a good band. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not me and the other ones is not important. Uh, not in my band. All is important. It, it was important that the bass player sh uh, should bring something to the music. Yeah. Uh, I did all these other soul albums that I did this adventure and I took the bass inside out and I turned it around and really tried to see what can I do with the bass. But right. on, on this album and also the coming album in the future with Magnus Rosen Band, it's not to show uh, my uh, skills, it's to bring a uh, good music. Right. And when we start a tour with that, of course, it's it's uh, uh, the charisma and the power in all uh, people in, in the band. I I, I wish everybody sh should go hundred percent on live. No step back, if you know what I mean. Sometimes it works in ways that on paper might people might not assume and i mean i didn't even meant to make a pun there but 
one of the songs, Paper Plane, um, is kind of like a power ballad, but you kind of, throughout the song you add a very funky, groovy bass line that completely reinvents that song where other bands would have their ballad on the album without that you know, uh, creative bass playing. Were there moments when you were when you were doing your side projects and your solo, uh, your uh, your non-rock solo stuff uh, or recording this album, that there were like these aha moments of like, well, I never thought this would work, but actually it does work. Uh, were there any discoveries that you made um, with your music during this recording? Yes, of course. Uh, I have a lot of experience. So, so I know uh, it would work. Uh, but of course, I did this these discoveries before. Um, you, you can handle the, even if a bass is a comp instrument, you can also turn it out to a solo instrument. And, uh, and um, uh, when we did this song, me and Chetral, Soma Pala, the, the, the old singer from uh, Fire Wind, uh, first of all, we decide it should be only bass and vocals. Then um, I know a brilliant uh, pianist, um, yeah. Georg Tan, <clears throat> and um, so I ask him, can you turn, play something really, really uh, minimalistic? Yeah. A and he is fantastic. And he has this touch, if you know what I mean. Yeah, on, yeah, yeah. On, on the instrument so and um, uh, so he did that and then we also so thought maybe we should have some um, hand drums african drums or indian drums uh, um, so it's a really different uh, ballad and um, uh, and i love when it's uh, naked like this uh, yeah, it yeah, not yeah. needs uh, all the time to have a a full uh, band with uh, um, a lot of harmonies and it also is it can also be strong to have it naked like this it seems like yesterday there is you celebrate not only the past with some very classic songs but also your own past you You've recorded one Hammerfall cover uh, on on the album as well, which you know you you have a 60th anniversary coming up. The album on which Hearts on Fire was, uh, Crimson Thunder, has its 20th anniversary this year, yes. um, which is a, a, a fantastic uh, milestone as well. Um, the original. Have you ever in your life? had more fun recording a video than the original Hearts on Fire video with the Swedish curling team um, and, and you guys trying to beat them at their own game. I remember that video from 20 years ago. It was so fun. Um, and I think that the curling team went on winning gold on, at the Olympics or something like that. Yes. Um, that do you remember shooting that video? Because it, it, I, I assume the next day you were filled with bruises and pain, but uh, the shooting, the, move, uh, the, the the video itself must have been so much fun. It, it was, uh, of course, I remember every moment in it, and it was so fun. And it is, it's fun also to do things with a um, with a smiling eye, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Um, it can be serious, even if you have fun and i think this is what rock music also is about to have fun you can also have a message and um, um in this case it was a lot of fun yeah yeah so w we all were very thankful for this uh, video i must say Um, if we look even further back at some of the inspirations on the album, you, you cover songs by the Stones and, and also ABBA. Uh, we have The Winner Takes It All. Um, very special guest on the album is, uh, uh, I will mispronounce the proper Swedish pronunciation, but uh, Janne Schaffer or Schaefer. Um, 
the session uh, artist for ABBA. Um, ABBA, such a band with so many fantastic songs and many have been covered by, by rock bands. Uh, my personal favorite of ABBA probably is The Eagle. Uh, when you look at The Winner Takes It All, was that always like your favorite pick or is that a song that just worked really well to turn it into a, a, a Magnus Rosen song? Um, what's your take there? Yes. Uh, first of all, I, I think uh, the ABBA songs is all is good, I must say. It's so great songs and uh, it was also really fun to um, record the ABBA song, especially when I also get the ABBA guitarist on the album, right. Jan Kaffer. He recorded 50 ABBA songs. But why we record that song? It was because when we started recording in Brazil after a, a, a tour with Shadowside, um, Fabio do it with us. He told me his absolutely favorite song was okay. The Winner Takes It All. And when he played it for me, I could almost see a tear in his ear, uh, eyes. And uh, so so I told him, we're going to have that song on the album if it's your favorite song. Another special guest, obviously, for people that follow your career know how close you are. Um, but uh, Tony Martin is also a guest on the album. Um, one of the most underrated singers in metal's history. Yes. He, he, he for me, Tony Martin is a, a, a fantastic singer. Um, and in Black Sabbath, he did a fabulous job i can say mm -hmm. yeah and uh, now these days he's also my friend and uh, i i play with him actually in his exactly. band and uh, um so it's easy for me to ask him uh, not only because it's my friend it's first of all because he's so great singer and a nice nice human being uh, so uh Tony Martin should really be up, um, um, really on, on the top of the um, rock world because yeah, yeah, yeah. he belongs there. Magnus, um, I just want to say thank you for your time. I really appreciate it uh, to answer some of my questions uh, and allowing me to be a little bit of a fanboy here, which is, you know, it, which is fun for me. I, that doesn't happen with every interview that I, that I get to do, but uh, I've been following you for a long time and I'm super excited for you to release this new album um, with the world. And then I will keep my fingers crossed um, that uh, we will see some live show announcements and uh, uh, yes. and, and hopefully we can see you on a stage again real soon. My name is thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I uh, wish you the best with this release cycle. Thank you. And I hope our roads will cross again live. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.